Greetings, pro wrestling fans, and thank you for joining us at the Pro Wrestling Look Back Podcast. I'm Nick, and I'm sitting here with... The man of a thousand and one names, but for tonight, I'm just out of him. <laughs> and your boy, Younger. Fuck. This guy does it every time. Yes, sir. Every time. That's a good one. That is a fucking good one. I thought about doing the old, you know, Don Cena, maybe. Don Cena. <laughs> oh, why'd you ruin that? You should have... Maybe... Maybe, uh, you know, oh, had, had a couple of brews. Maybe CM Drunk. Oh, man, you're giving these away. These hey, are... hey, these are free. These are free. These are on the house. These ones are on the house. These are good names. Oh, yeah, these are the... good names. It's but, all right, uh, though. It's cool. Yeah, so welcome. Anybody taking a listen to the Pro Wrestling Look Back. Um, we're kicking it old school, if we can say that, in six months that yeah, we've been around. We can say that. Um, we're bringing it back to the Pro Wrestling Look Back style. We're going to be looking back at Money in the Bank. No. Not money in the bank. Summer it got slam. mixed up. They felt because this, yeah, this pay per view, it takes place right after Money in the Bank, which kind of almost supersedes it. But it's SummerSlam 2011. Um, took place in Los Angeles, California, at the Staples Center. It was the uh, third consecutive time that they were at the Staples Center for SummerSlam, uh, the 24th annual SummerSlam. The attendance was 17,404. Uh, it was a pretty good show. I think that's kind of my go-to. Pretty good. Yeah, but. <laughs> I don't know. It, it uh, <clears throat> nothing too special. But before we dive right in, I gotta let everybody know. Check us out on Twitter and Instagram at pwlookback. The email address is prowrestinglookback at gmail dot com, and the website is prowrestinglookback dot wordpress dot com. And check us out there. Let us know uh, how we're doing, and if you want any different content, new content, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Any quick major points you guys want to tell me about the show? Sorry if I'm a little under the weather sounding tonight. I got the tea going and, I don't know, the nose is bugging me. We're working on it. Yeah. The show, I don't know, overall, what did you guys think? Not your favorite SummerSlam, I could say? Uh, certainly not. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> but it wasn't that not bad. Not at all. Was it? Well, it wasn't bad, but, It was, you know. Very pear-shaped. Mm. Yep. Uh, you know, like, the, the back end was significantly better oh for sure than any other part yeah it was um i don't know you know we just you know throwing shit in the dark i didn't know what we were gonna go with but you know we're in that season summer slam season so maybe we'll oh for sure with summer slam coming up soon well uh we i figured it was good to dive into to to a summer slam um i'm not sure if we'll release this uh right when we're recording it kind of beginning of July or if we'll do it kind of closer to SummerSlam, but yeah. we're not going to talk much about current WWE in this episode anyway, so kind of doesn't really matter. But, um, yeah, the, the national anthem at the beginning, how did you guys feel about the kind of guitar? I think we totally missed the guy's name. Yeah, you know, it was pretty cool. That, it was different for sure. Yeah. Uh, but it's cool. It's, just, it's national anthem, and and I'm just glad he didn't sound like Fergie. And uh, <laughs> Cool to change, you know, and... change it up, do something different. That's always good. Yeah, I like I like the uh, the change. You know, you always get a singer like a from American Idol or someone of that nature, or some someone in the pop pop culture who's currently, as we seen later in the night. You know, we had CeeLo. I'm glad he didn't do it. Oh yeah, that that wouldn't have been so. <laughs> my Green, first choice, <laughs> aka Nars Barkley, aka Gnarly Davidson, when he dressed himself all in gold. Yeah, he's oh, a lot like you crazy. He's fucking a man bastard. of many names. Yeah, he's an, he's a man of many fucking stupidness. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Shit, stupid names. How's that? But yeah, it was cool. Uh, I didn't mind the uh, the guitar. I guess you know they're changing. It's cool that when they change it up like once like that once in a while. They do yeah. that throughout like all of sports too, like NFL and like that like basketball and all that stuff and hockey. You know, so yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's a good opening. Good little change up. Yep. Um, show kind of started with the the punk Cena promo. This was kind of the big pay per view. Of the sh- or the match of the show, and yeah, I don't know. Um, I-, I guess we can go into the first match unless there was anything you guys want to talk about. Like, I I I, I have it written down that this match was kind of or this pay per view. Sorry, I said that again. Um, was kind of focused and based a lot about the Money in the Bank match or yeah, pay per view for sure yeah. prior. So I don't know, and they were really stressing like the one champion aspect of Cena and Punk. And yes. How, like there was the first time there was two champions, and they really wanted to make it so there was only one undisputed champion. Yeah, for sure. Um, that was pretty cool too. 
But uh, first match was a six man. I didn't know. I didn't know any of these matches going in. Um, I don't know how about you guys. But, no, no. Well, Don. What? Well, yeah, I decided to yeah. tell Nick uh, not tell him the card really and just let it play out. Yeah, I didn't know anything. On. I remember watching this. I think back oh, in the yeah. day. I yeah, just don't too. remember how the build up was, but. No, uh, totally. I definitely didn't watch this, so that's cool to get. Yeah. Different. Yeah. Like he's seen it a bunch. You've probably seen it once, and mm-hmm. I've never seen it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Um. Who was it? For Miz came out first. He talked a little smack, and then our truth came out. Yes. Um, the Joey Numbers sign. Shout out to Wrestling Soup. Yeah, that's cool. Anybody <laughs> out there that listens to Pro Wrestling Look Back and also listens to the Pro Wrestling Soup. Yeah. The Joey Numbers sign was cool. <laughs> um, Michael Cole going fucking mental. Oh yeah. What was that about? When the Miz came out. Like, give me. I have it literally written down. Like, I remember ex- him liking him. Explain. Like, on... Yeah. Explain this to me. I don't know. It started. I don't know. He, like, it's remember how Miz is like talking about how he should be treated like a different way because like he was like in the main event for WrestleMania. It's like what's going on today. It's like it's still carried over from the last seven years because he's still doing promos and coming up freaking out like I should be the main event. Yeah, I have the yeah. IC belt. Like I've had the longest reign of the belt. I've been on every show. I'm like other some people. Shout out to Brock Lesnar. That's a and good point. yeah. So uh, I don't know. I think it was. I don't remember too much of it, but I heard. I think it was like. Michael Cole was just like, yeah, like he did, he does deserve a lot, and him and King would always go back at each other all the time, and then eventually, Michael Cole started cheering for him. I think it was a couple of Raws, and he was just cheering for him. Yeah, I'm not too sure. D, I and think you probably know big... better, but I'm not too sure. I'm well. I'm pretty sure this was still like heel Michael Cole. Oh, okay. And uh, heel Michael Cole was always just upset. The Miz was his like favorite wrestler from yeah, when the Miz. Sense. That whole title reign was happening. Yeah, because during until... that heel time with Michael Cole, they had because I remember a couple things. Because the general manager was the anonymous general manager. Yeah, and Michael right, Cole would always get up and yeah, that's make right. His announcement. So yeah, this was heel Michael Cole, and I guess his favorite wrestler at the time was definitely The Miz. I do remember that now. Yeah, I do. I yeah. just don't remember the build up, like how he kept cheering, like why he started cheering for him. But I think it was based on because of like what Miz was like, yeah, I should be number one, like all this other stuff, and I never get put into main event opportunities and can't showcase my talent yeah it was something along or, or something like that yeah those lines. you know what i mean but yeah but sure. yeah that's how that's how it went basically <laughs> Shout i don't know if that clears it off to you whatever but... you guys can hear yeah for driving sure. by sorry about that but i but, know uh... was, uh, <laughs> don't know if that clears it up for you no but... not at all no that's good it's honestly um that was and who was their who was their teammate the miz our truth and Nick's... yeah no i was just gonna say that that is good because i didn't understand why michael cole was so oh yeah 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 but um yeah his teammates were Alberto Del, no one cares about you, is what I have Rio. written down on the paper. Oh, don't say that. He was good. Um, yeah. Yeah, to each his own. Uh, and he, he came out he came out in a Ferrari. So $250,000 Ferrari. you damn right. Is that what they said? Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't book that. Wow, I'm happy you got that, Younger. Um, I thought Rey Mysterio coming out, I thought his gear was really nice. Kind of a San Diego... I don't know if it was the Padres. I didn't even pay attention to that. What did he come out to? Like the yellow and blue Chargers? Or no, whatever? no, no. Oh. It was more of like a Dodgers kind of white and blue. Like Ooh, I don't know if nice. it was. I don't know if it was supposed to be the Dodgers, but like it definitely felt. Should be because Los Angeles, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah, pay per view too. Yeah. Um. So that that, that was pretty cool. We found out that Ray had won a match on Raw, or was it Raw or pay per view? <clears throat> Earlier, basically prior won, prior to this was... match. Well, no. You know what I think? What it was due to the fact like so they did this when Punk. When Punk left with the belt, we had uh, we had a tournament to see who would be the next WWE champion, and it came down to the uh, Rey Mysterio winning that tournament, and then John Cena getting a title match later that night. Cena beat Rey, and everyone was kind of saying, "Oh, he did. Rey didn't see it coming. He had no notice. He couldn't prepare." And then you know, generally when a champion loses, they kind of get a rematch clause. So I believe that Rey's rematch clause takes place the night after this SummerSlam. Yeah, I have that written down too, yeah. that, that his match, his number one contendership match was supposed to take place like the next night. Yeah. So. Yeah, and he's in the opening match in a six-way, <coughs> six-man tag. With a bunch of mid-carders. Yeah, that's ridiculous. In my opinion. Hey, well, Del, Del, the Del Rio is a certified... Uh... Morrison was there too. Yeah, I guess so. Morrison was the other tag team with uh, Rey Mysterio Yeah, and, no, Kofi uh, Morrison, Kofi, Rey Mysterio oh, yeah. versus Miz, Del Rio, and, right. and R-Truth. I don't know, I guess they're not mid-carders, but... You know what I mean? No, definitely. No, I get where you're coming from. Like certain guys, For sure. like Art yeah. Truth and um, even Morrison, like they they've never held the heavyweight title. Same with Kofi. Same with Kofi as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, Boom. The, Boom. The match was actually 
decent. Um, I have a couple little things written down that were in the match. Like, I remember there was a really cool monkey flip where Miz caught, like, stupid air. Yeah. Like, more air than you should get on that move. Um, and Kofi, with that, like, modified front DDT thing, I asked you what it was called. And oh, like, yeah, the modified, like, but DDT, yeah. Basically, like, Kofi landing, like, directly on his face. Yeah. From the Miz. So that wasn't bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. Any, anything else, guys, to uh, point out with the yeah. match? There was nothing too crazy. I mean, I noticed Ray wasn't too like involved in the match until the end the when end. he got the like, victory. That's what I was gonna like, say. Yeah, how, he was. How did you feel about the finish? I like the fact. I like the fact that it was Ray Mysterio getting the getting the offense in and getting the pin for his team because you know, like Younger said, this guy is uh, you know current number one contender for the WWE title. He should definitely, you know, in my opinion, be getting the one, two, three the match and he did so i like that part of it that was cool for sure um yeah i guess that was pretty much it then ray ray got the win ray got the finish and on to the next one yeah we had punk backstage with johnny ace oh uh, yes what is his actual name i don't even remember john laurinitis laurinitis i've called or, him i've so. just been calling him johnny ace for so long john, now that it's john like, laurinitis i don't even remember but i don't know he was asking for an apology basically from punk yeah, because Punk kicked him in the head, I think, on Raw. Oh, he kicked him in the head? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, fair enough. I mean, that doesn't What a beauty. An <laughs> what a beauty. But, oh. I don't know. We can probably move straight forward. He was talking shit, and then Punk gave him a very, like, unsincere... Yeah, sarcastic... Yeah. Apology. Apology. Um, I didn't state at the beginning. We got Cole, Booker, and the King on yeah. commentary. I just figured I'd get that out there since we didn't really talk about that earlier. Do you guys like that group? of commentators just on paper no but after watching after watching the show it uh it is yeah what about you younger yep i liked uh i remember watching them because they, they kept going for a couple more years or whatever yeah. yeah i liked them they started getting better and better and michael cole and jay i mean michael cole and the king right when michael cole came in after jr yeah i'm a big michael he, cole fan too, me too so. i like michael cole yeah he's good he's uh, good stuff but Booker like, T cracks me up every time. Oh, for so. sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll be talking about Booker T in the Daniel Bryan match. Yeah. Look for that. Look for that. I miss JBL. But, yeah, we'll we'll go on to uh, on to the next match. I have it written down again. Not that I need to write it down because it's, you know, this is a big match with some big boys. But Sheamus versus Mark Henry. With the heavy hitters. Yeah, this was definitely Mark Henry's time. And Sheamus also having a lot of steam going into this match, so. Yeah, I don't know. I have, like, like I said, I didn't watch the at the the product at the time, and I didn't see the feud, so I literally had like meh written down. I hope this is better than it sounds. Yeah, and it it was. I'll be honest, the match was better than I was anticipating it to be, but oh, it yeah. was very like big man. Like it made me feel like Sheamus is a bigger dude than he is. I even though he he's not a small guy, I just mm -hmm. mean like I felt like I was watching like two like the heavyweights, super heavyweights. Yeah. <laughs> whereas I don't really put. Sheamus in the super heavyweight category. He's a big mean. guy, though. He's pretty it was big. a very slow match, that's for sure. It was good, though. I noticed the parts of when he had Sheamus on the rope, like like what Ray Mysterio usually does and does the 619. And yeah. Mark came at him and did that jump through the ropes yeah. and hit him in the back of the head. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, they were moving actually at some points pretty Yeah, I would not expect that. You're right. right. Well, um, it was. I, Cole was like terrified. Did something happen prior where like. I, Mark Henry or Sheamus or something attacked him yeah, because no, I, he was I like think, terrified. I think Mark Henry might have spooked him a couple of times, just kind of yelling in his face and shit. Yeah, like yeah. I don't think he actually put his hands on him. But that's what I wanted to ask you too before we dive a little more into the match. What did you think of the whole little package at the beginning showing Mark Henry how he had taken out Big Show, Kane, with the with the chair through? Yeah, through it, the leg. it made me feel better about it than when I first saw the graphic. Yeah, you're a little more invested. Like you, it's more believable. You know, Mark Henry's. You know, badass, really. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I had it put down, too. I don't know. It, like you said, um, Sheamus had some serious aggression. Yeah. Didn't you Did think he... so, Younger? Like, I thought it, a lot of his shots were, like, intense. That's Sheamus, though, too. That is, no, that's what I said. That, that... Especially in the beginning when he yeah. was, like, kind of, uh, you know what I mean? When he was coming right at him yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I, it was really. First, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I know what you, you know. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, when he started coming at him at first, that, that was crazy. And, um, and, like, you know, like Nick said, like, that is Sheamus, you know, but. I just I, that's he's what just, I like about him. He's known for being a yeah. stiff, tough guy. Right that's now. what I like about him. He's he always brings it. Yeah, good for him. I still, as good as it was, I still don't think this is the best start to a, a show. 
let alone a SummerSlam, one of the big four. Yeah. For these two matches kind of to open the show. I don't know. I'm not a booker. I'm not a anything like we've said a million times. It's just my opinion. Watching it eight years later or whatever it is. Um, seven years, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, it's not they could have placed stuff differently. I mean I mean the match that we'll talk about later with, with Wade Barrett and Daniel Bryan, I think maybe that should have been closer to the front of the show. Yeah. To spread out a little bit of the of you know, the good matches, I guess. As yeah, no. bad as that sounds, but I don't know. Um anything else to say about that match, guys? Well, uh what about Mark Henry put him through the barricade? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Right and that. they they yeah. they had the uh, the caution tape up for the rest of the night after that happened, which I thought that was a, a nice, nice little, touch. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember what Are other. Are you serious? I didn't even take that in. Yeah. yeah Are you serious? Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, That's they hilarious. threw up the caution tape over That's... in that corner, so I thought that was <laughs> it's a nice touch. That's fucking yeah. awesome. Um, yeah, and he got the win, obviously, with uh, the count out win. Yeah. Yeah. Which kind of... you know what? No, but I. Like, I remember you saying you didn't really... Li- but yeah, I look at it like this. Okay, so, like I said, Sheamus definitely had a lot of steam going into this as a as a top-tier guy. Mark Henry as well. You know, he's been injuring guys, taking him out. So I think, like, to not to defend it, but yeah. I think what they want, like, to still keep Sheamus strong, he didn't get pinned by Mark Henry. He lost by a count-out after being thrown through I a barricade. I guess that's true. Where was Sheamus's... <clears throat> you... You know, watching the product at the time, the two of you, where was Sheamus's oh, he's trajectory at, at, top after this? Like, world world title, he stayed in that mix always. Is this like, but this is before the whole Daniel Bryan world title mania? Stuff? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so he still had that in his future. Yes. Um, I guess that makes sense. And, and you're right; it's a cleaner way to, to 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 keep him strong. Yeah, for sure. Um, on to the next one. For sure. Christian talking shit about Randy Orton. Oh uh, yeah. I thought this was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. um, not that I can remember everything that he said, but he was just talking a lot of shit, being a, being a good heel like Christian is when he when he needs to be, about how he's a world heavyweight champion. He had the one line about kind of because they were playing off, you know, being in L.A. and stuff, and he had the line, "You're like the Cowboys and Aliens movie," and he he chirped the movie a bunch. Well, the one that killed me, what he said about himself. He said it. You're, you're He's stale. Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a hero, like Harry Potter. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Great. Sorry. No, that's no. Probably loud. Sorry. Uh, hey, that's all good. Um, but the Cowboys and Aliens. I don't know. I like that movie. You so, like that movie? I've I never ca- seen it. Yeah, so. I mean, it's probably not a fan favorite, but I thought it was pretty cool. I guess I it thought was it's a... like original. You know what I mean? Yeah. But not the movie podcast. Harry Potter, man. Christian, <laughs> the man. Yeah. Fellow Canadian. The man, the myth, the legend. Yeah, fellow Canadian, that's for sure. Um, how about everybody's favorite part of the night? CeeLo Green. Oh. Performance. Oh, Jesus. Harley Davidson. How uh, Donovan said it looked like he was in a moo-moo. It looked like he was in a moo-moo. Like, remember that episode of The Simpsons when Homer gets, like, obese and he's wearing that? <laughs> and he wears that yeah. thing and he's got the, like, like that's the bird. literally what he yeah. might have been. He's got the bird that <laughs> yeah. just pushed the yes button for yeah. him. That was CeeLo. Oh, that's good shit. I thought he looked more like a pastor of some kind. <laughs> Like a, a, a church, you know. I'm not going to lie to you guys because I watched that before I came over here and I skipped through that whole performance. Yeah, it's okay. Honestly, I, yes, I, I other really than the chirps about his muumuu and his <laughs> pastor outfit, whether whatever, whatever it may have been, I mean, it had <coughs> sparkles all over it. So it wasn't, I don't know, it definitely wasn't that good. But the, the bell is coming out and seeing them still yep. back in the day yep. dancing around. Definitely uh, was worth a watch. Alicia Fox and Rosa Mendez, I believe. Rosa yeah. Mendez. Yeah. Why couldn't you remember it when we were watching know. the show? Were you waiting now. for me to hit record? No, or no, no, it just said. <laughs> the fuck is this about? But, uh, Mataraz. Mataraz. <laughs> Shout out to, uh, Danton. But, uh, yeah. How many times have I said, but, uh, you guys got to help me out here? It's a team effort show. Well, CeeLo. What did you guys think, CeeLo? I think we've said our piece. Man. Like, I think yeah, the, I don't really need to I talk think about the moo-moo and the pastor yeah, and Barkley the bell is dancing. I, I feel like the yeah, crowd wasn't really that into it either. No. I, we went the other way. They else. didn't really show the crowd much. Yeah. They kept the camera on every five seconds. They kept the camera on CeeLo. No, the song kept coming on every five fucking seconds. Well, I noticed one thing that I enjoyed about the performance. They they were kept panning to really good-looking women in the crowd. So good work on them for that. Hey, they know what they're doing there. 
Yeah. They know what they're doing there. On to the next one? Yeah. The Divas match. Um, We'll see how that goes. <laughs> I don't know. It was pretty good, I guess, for a Divas match in 2011. Yeah. <laughs> I was never a Kelly Kelly fan, though. <laughs> like, I don't... She can move pretty good. I didn't... Yeah. That should have I, I bet belt, she though. can. I bet she can. Yeah, okay. Hold on a second there. <laughs> Did, we did. all know Sheldon Surrey, the man, the myth, the legend. Yeah, the former Anaheim Ducks. Shout out to the Anaheim Ducks, but Okay, no, not no, no shout out to the Anaheim <laughs> Ducks, but uh, that, I wasn't going there. But at the same time, he's a good player, but not that team. Fuck that team. Um, oh, but no, Kelly Kelly can move, but I think Beth should have won that match. Yeah, I remember uh, at the time, live, like thinking that Beth was going to get it. That's right. Let's what get it. Was, what, was, what was up with the... Uh, Kelly Kelly's Ugg boots. Yeah, you you were <laughs> you were spotted spotted that quick. Hey, eh? you you were like, what the fuck's up with her? Well, yeah, I look at people's gear. And yeah, I don't know. She was wearing some furry like boots that didn't go with whatever she had on up here, upper. Yeah, it was weird. How long did she have the title? Like, was it a long thing? Oh, or? buddy, she was the one. She was their golden child at this time. She, really? Oh, yeah, she was always, she had it for a long time, and if she didn't have it, she got it back, or she was in the mix. Yeah, all the time. And I think she had it for a long, like, time, or what uh, felt like, I, not like one of those, you know, f- five, 500 day title reigns or something. Young Salsa would have been a fan of that, I can, that's all I have to say. Yeah? Yeah, I was definitely a fan of her in, like, 06, when I was, like, 12. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know. That but probably... you know what? This was definitely uh, one of her better performances, I think. As, as much as I'm not a fan of her, like, I thought she did pretty well. Yeah. I like how she came out trying to just... Yeah, I uh, had it written down that I thought it was pretty fast-paced for a Divas match in 2011. Like yeah. I said, it was, it was pretty good in that sense because back then they didn't get that kind of time. It felt longer than most Divas matches do yeah. or did. Um, anything from you, Young? No, like I said, Beth should have won. Uh, That's pretty much it. Yeah. Like uh, like Donovan said, I remember watching that back in the day. Beth was coming up, too, at the same time. She yeah. was still doing really, really well. Yeah. They were pushing her a lot. So. I thought she was going to win, for sure, to be honest. And even the way that uh, like Kelly did when it was with the roll-up. Yeah, well, that's what I was just yeah. going to say. I thought the roll-up was nice, though. Like, yeah, the nice way that they too. did it. Yeah, because Beth had her up for the finisher. Yeah. And she she almost had it. a little nip slip first, so she had to fix that. Had to, fucking, yeah. yeah. She fixed it with the roll-up. <laughs> Decent match overall. Um, (laughs) Almost had the nips slip. Well, she did, man. She had some. But shout out to uh, Eve 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 Torres. Marie, fucking wardrobe malfunctions. (laughs) That's not where I was going. I was gonna say shout out to Eve Torres. Him him thinking a today is really. And Natalia in the corners of the two women. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not your disgusting. Yeah, I wasn't going into wardrobe malfunction. Well, they almost had an accident. They I'm did. Just, no, they did. They did I'm almost just, have an accident. You know, trying to they did. spice it up a bit. <laughs> I don't know. Spice it <laughs> up a bit. Let's, let's move forward. Yeah, I was going to say this. Uh, good, good overall match. Kelly Kelly retains the Divas title with a roll-up. Yeah, very spicy. Very spicy. And an almost uh, wardrobe malfunction. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, how about R-Truth talking to Jimmy Hart? Oh, this was great. Honestly, I remember. Can now remember when I was watching it live too. It all kind of came back to me while I was uh, rewatching it here this evening. It was great. I remember thinking like, our <clears throat> truth and Jimmy. Like for a second, the way they built it up, it's like you think, "Ooh, is our truth gonna get a manager here?" Because that would have been a nice fucking touch, especially having someone from yesteryear be put with him, like Jimmy Hart, who's such a famous. I could, I could work too. Famous manager. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah. I was uh, singing in the shower <laughs> by Kelly Clarkson. Or... <laughs> but anyway, I yeah, know. Te- our... Technical difficulties. Our truth, man. And Jimmy, I really thought for a second, I was like, oh, could this be a thing? That'd be so cool. Our truth, getting a little bit of a push, put a manager with him, be good for him. But then, of course, they played up the whole little Jimmy thing because our truth used to call the fans. That's a little. Like John Cena fans were called Little Jimmy. And then he would always like oh. imagine like you're a little like little Jimmy, little Jimmy. And, and the conspiracy like the company's out to get him. <laughs> Bro, so, see, I didn't know that. Yeah, like, so that makes all. it better. Right? I would have liked that segment a lot more yeah. if I knew that that was a thing. But now knowing that, it makes it a great segment. Oh, for sure. Because yeah. I yeah, I didn't write much. I just wrote the the segment down. That's why I wanted you guys to kind of yeah, especially with Jimmy Hart, man, that would have been awesome. Yeah. Speak more on that. But uh, I think we can use the sound effects machine one more time for the segment. 
Oh. Jimmy Hart. The man, the myth, the legend. Again. Yeah. There's a lot of man, the myth, the legends. I say that a lot. Oh, and then we had a quick, uh, our, our truth, our truth looked over and he's like, what are you looking at? And who do we have there? But uh, Ron Artest or Meta World Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Meta World Peace. Shout out to Nibs. Yeah, when I'm in the stands with the fans, Ron Artest. Uh, he was, Ron Artest was there with his daughter and. Yeah, that was very random. Uh, um, what, uh, did he play for LA at the time? Yeah, he did. So, okay. Yeah. That, yeah. So then, that, there we go. Yeah. But like. Well, you know, they got to throw wanna, in some stuff. I don't want to get into yeah. it. No, get into it a little. Give what, he's just chilling backstage during SummerSlam? What are, like, your, coming what are your from, thoughts on Ron Artest? Coming from practice? What do you think about Ron? No, well, I'll, I'll give you the thoughts on the segment, not Ron Artest. No, let's again. hear about Ron Artest. Let's, let's hear about the three. What, are you, three. you taking a piss during the segment or during Ron Artest? That's just... The, he's the, the man. This, like, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not... No gyps to the... But just that, meta, no, that... I know that to, part of the segment. Meta. We didn't need it. Like, we could have done it with just Jimmy and... Jimmy and Truth. No tips to, you know, <laughs> meta. Yeah, it's meta. <laughs> oh my does God. he look like a Ron? He definitely looks more like a meta. Are you not trying it. to square up with meta? No, fuck <laughs> no. I don't want any heat with world peace. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I'm against world peace. <laughs> I don't want Why doesn't he? I think he looks like he's Ron. Ron Artest, he's man. He's Ron. He doesn't look like a Ron. It's like our truth. His name's Ron. What does a Ron look like? like Ron, Ron Killings. Yeah. Oh, there you go. See, he's got you there. He does. Because I was going to say Ron Howard. <laughs> what? <laughs> and that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> All right. Um, and uh, we're going to get back to the Welcome back to the, back to the Pro Wrestling Look Back podcast, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I <just> see... <laughs> um, what do you want to get to? The next one? I think this is one of the best matches of the, of the night. Okay, so what would that be? Oh, come on. Obviously, my boy. Your boy. Your boy. Come on. Come on. Randall. No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. We got Wade Barrett versus Daniel Bryan. Oh, I, look at me. In a, in a little, uh, a yeah. little, what is it, a grudge match? Did they have a few? It's like Ron Howard over here. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a bit of a, I guess it, a bit of a feud, yeah, because they had a couple interactions beforehand. Like so Wade, it, Wade Barrett almost won the money it, in the bank. The younger's trying to keep it together. DB gave him a nice kick and... Um, won the money in the bank so yeah, I guess Wade I Brent, like how they showed us that because yeah. I didn't know right so that was cool Yeah, and these guys got history going back to like the whole Nexus thing yes, they both they, came in they together. talked about that too yeah that just yeah. showed me up when Daniel Bryan came out because I, I didn't recognize that music and that was yeah crazy. Like, what the, the music hell? Was, like, was completely coming out? different dun, 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 dun. That I was, wish I could get it up on the sound effects machine but probably not quick enough um, I remember he was going through a phase of like his music being different and wait, and speaking of music being different, man, shout out to the plane again or whatever's flying. It's D- DB man flying high. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, wait, wait, oh, I, lo- I love the fun atmosphere on the look back shows that we've brought here six months into yeah, our gotta keep endeavor. It. That's right. Keep it, keep it fun. But yeah, Daniel Bryan, sorry. But yeah, no, no, I was saying about music changes, man. Wade Barrett, I don't know if younger you remember like live, but like. Dude, Wade Barrett went through like five theme songs, like in his career. I do WWE. remember that. He had like maybe that. like five to six different theme songs. He switched it. Remember, it was like back to back weeks. He yeah, had like a different I remember theme one week he had a different, and then like literally a week later he'd come out to something else. Like they were really trying to figure him out, I guess. Huh. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, no, I didn't like it. I liked the music he had here. I thought Wade Barrett's song here, "End of Days," I believe it was called, it was a good. good yeah. What's he doing now? Baron Corbin. What is Barrett doing True. now? The end of days. Yeah. Yeah, uh, my boy. What, uh, my Wade, boy Barrett. did you check out, I don't know if you're interested, anybody out there too, check out uh, Wade Barrett on Chris Jericho's podcast a couple yeah. weeks ago. Good interview. Oh, Definitely is it? Yeah. Give you a kind of a gist of what he's been up to yeah. since since leaving. Because I, I, I was under the impression that he had been let go, or they, they but he totally wanted out and yeah. he just needed a break from wrestling. Kind of similar to Jericho in 05. Yeah, he's so that's why it was cool to, that, he says. to to have them talk about it. Oh, all right. Well, what a bitch. But all right. Well, listen to the interview. I'm Check just it joking. out. I'm <laughs> joking. I love Wade Barrett, man. Yeah, yeah. no. I honestly, love Wade I liked Bad News Barrett because I thought that was a cool gimmick. This they, guy was great. Awesome. If you listen, Bad like news. they killed it for him. They basically, I don't want to give them away the interview, but they basically told him to stop saying the catchphrase. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. Go go listen well, to the interview. It's good. That's a joke. It's a good listen. Yeah. I was gonna say because he's awesome, but I will definitely. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, shout out to the Westwood One Podcast Network. We're out here. We're looking for a network to be supported. So, 
you know, anyone out there that is willing to pick up the PW look back, stay tuned. That's right. Um, but back- I, I thought Daniel Bryan's gear was pretty good. Oh yeah, no, nice gear. And I also thought Daniel Bryan was looking a little more deezed, a little more jacked, a little beefy, yeah, than the current 2018 Daniel Bryan that we have. Which I'm not going to rag on him about. He's just coming back from a long injury, but well, he looked a lot bigger back then. What did you think of this match? It was, it was a good match, very back and forth. Yeah, really good match. I have that written down too. Outside the ring, back and forth. Yeah. Um, how about that one kick by Daniel Bryan? It was very Kota Ibushi-esque. Right to the head, yeah. Yeah. It reminded me like a lot of something I would see from Kota Ibushi. Yeah, yeah, that's those yeah, those two are very that, yeah. similar with their kicks. Yeah, yeah, for sure, I can agree with that. Yeah, the match was kind of like you said, back and forth. It was a good match. Um, in the end, you have Bade where or Bade where <laughs> Wade Barrett winning with uh, uh, the wasteland move. Yeah, kind of describe that for us if you can, Donovan. So it's like kind of like when Cena has a guy up for his finisher yeah. up on the shoulders. Slam him down forward so he lands on his back. So kind of like, but with a, a lot more force. So like a reverse Samoan drop. And too. he grabs him by the arm too when yeah. he flips it too. Okay. So he has him on top and grabs the left arm and then he swings. It's like a swing and he yeah. comes. Kind of like a yeah, like, like a reverse Samoan drop. Yeah, yeah, like a forward Samoan exactly. drop. Exactly. Like almost. Donovan said, yeah, and he lands on his back too. Cool. Yeah. Definitely a good move. I think he did that for a while, but I just thought it'd be cool to get, I don't know, somebody to explain. Yeah, yeah. Kind of what it looked like. Um, I thought that it was okay. I know you're about to go in, Donovan, but. Not exactly Daniel Bryan's time yet, yeah. so this was okay to see him lose. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to Wade Barrett at that time. Well, they they I remember them doing a lot of that. I had a, a friend uh, at the time who he was really big on Daniel Bryan, and I remember him being like upset, thinking like, "Oh, is this guy even gonna like? He's gonna be the guy to cash in and not get it." Like he thought it was like a rib or something. You think he's lying? He's <laughs> got other friends. That <laughs> I don't know about that actually. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, but no, yeah, I maybe. I maybe. feel, <laughs> I feel you're, you're, yeah, your animals don't count. <laughs> hey, bro, my goldfish, uh, my goldfish, Bobby. Yeah, how's Bobby doing? He's doing great. Goldfish, he's eating, he's getting big. Bobby? He's getting fucking big. Uh, we know Younger didn't listen to to uh, one of our most recent episodes. No, I guess I didn't. Why would happen? The Father's Day episode. Oh no, no, yeah, I did. He pranked me, and I thought he had a kid, and he told me he had a goldfish, and that's like a kid. I asked him if what his name was, and he said Bobby, and then. Well, that's how you know it's a joke, because no one names their kid Bobby these days. No, and he told me he's got a headband. Hey, Bobby for his, Lashley for his goldfish. Bobby Rude. So, yeah, it's a good episode. Real name. Go check it out. Bobby Green. Intercontinental Title Show. Is that what it was? I uh, believe so. Yeah, I see. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it was the Intercontinental yeah, Title Show. I'm pretty sure it was. Too. Check it out. PW Look one. Back at PW Look Back Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, PW look Pro back. Wrestling Look Back. Pro Wrestling Look Back. But yeah, the match was pretty good. Yeah, I enjoyed Wade Barrett, that. Daniel Bryan. Good overall match. There was one random side note I wanted to bring up about the match. Bring it up. So the commentators talked about, uh, they shouted out Cody Rhodes and the fact that, you know, he won the Intercontinental title this past week on SmackDown. And Booker T and Cody had a little bit of a feud at the time. And Booker T goes, Cody Rhodes. When it comes to Cody Rhodes, I ain't congratulating that sucker, man. And we all, we were just dying at that. Like, Booker- <laughs> I'm so happy you brought that up, bro. That might have been the line of the night as hilarious. far as commentary goes. <laughs> <laughs> just the way you said about that sucker. I ain't congratulating that sucker, oh, man. man. He was a good IC champion too. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. Yeah, good. Cody, Cody, and uh, Booker had a good little feud there at the time. So. And shout out to Cody now, like what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, good for him. Bullet Club. Yeah, Ring of Honor in New Japan, actually. Shout out to uh, yeah, the shout whole out to those the whole crew there, the whole wrestling world. The, yeah, yeah, just everyone. No, just shout out to them. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, shout just out shout to them. Out to them. <laughs> Well, awesome. we know who Younger's a fan of. Yeah. But uh, we'll move on to the next one. The next batch being... Did I say batch or match? Batch. <laughs> <laughs> the next match being... Uh, Randy Orton versus Christian. Your boy Randall, like we were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. Your um, boy Randall. <laughs> probably, um, I mean, I'll say it now before we talk about the whole thing. Probably my personal match of the night. I would give this the old uh, Dave Meltzer four stars. Shout out Mike D. We know you're probably not listening, but <laughs> shout out to you anyway. What the fuck is wrong with you? But I'm just being honest. It's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the new sauce. I gotta have the character for the show. Oh you know? my god! I'd love for Mike D to be listening now, but shout out to Mike D. He's probably not listening. <laughs> hey, oh my goodness! Shout out! Gracious. We're gonna get him on a call. 
We're gonna get the the Mike D uh, New Japan report. He's definitely not gonna come on now as soon as you said that. He's not gonna know. <laughs> anyway, um, love you, Mike. Too sweet. Um, what do we want to talk about this match? Well, your boy Randall. What about the fact that Christian had a little a ace in the hole? And uh, he introduced the rated R. Yeah, I'm happy you brought this up because... Superstar. At first, before this got all twisty on us, yeah. I was fucking not having this. When Edge was, like, pumping Christian's wheels out there, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I, lit- like oh, I literally wrote down weird promo from Edge, not a fan. Do you remember what he said? But then, to... as Called we turned... Call him a whiny little bitch. Tur- turned the fucking page. No, 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 but before, didn't he... Wasn't he, like... Bigging him up almost exactly yeah. that's yeah, what i'm saying first, it was yeah. kind of just weird because it was like like i don't know i just thought it was weird because yeah. edge did that stuff on his own i don't know and then and then he got to the meat and potatoes exactly he leaves the ring calls him he never thought he would be a coward he never thought he would do this and that whiny little bitch yeah he leaves the ring and we get voices in your head do you hear the voices too sometimes yes yeah, I do. Too. I hear voices in my head. They talk to me. They understand. They talk to me. See? See? I... They talk to me. See, you hear them too. I All think, our listeners think, out I, there. I think we can give Younger an applause. <laughs> for this, Great job on that. They talk to me. I don't know the rest. Fuck. Yeah, it's all good. It's good. Yeah, it's good shit. Um, pretty back and forth match, as with a lot of the other ones, but this match was just really good. Um, Ooh, yeah. seeing Randy Orton as a babyface is always cool because it doesn't happen as much. Yeah. Except for currently. Um, I mean, well, you know what I mean. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Christian trying to leave at the beginning. Oh yeah. The at middle, one point, he took the title point, yeah. and tried to run through the crowd, which was funny. <clears throat> yeah, it was good. good. Entertaining. Classic, classic Christian. I know you wanted me to bring it up, Donovan, and we don't need to wait till the end of the match to do it, even though the end of the match has a big part of it. But talk about the chemistry of these two guys. I know that's something that oh, yes. you're big on. Yeah. Well, I just said, just in watching like the first few minutes of it and remembering this feud, which I've like, I've watched the entire, I remember watching the entire feud live and just these guys had so many good matches. If I could like describe or sum up this feud in like one word, it probably would be chemistry. Because just watching these guys the way they work together they flow and the hits are good and <coughs> the selling like everything all around is just great from both guys storytelling like, they, they mesh well together like if i it's one of my favorite feuds man honestly like i know they that, really that's make a you big, buy in. that's a big like thing to say but like this is I mean, what, yeah this, it's a big statement it is it's, I, it's one of my i really like it like the way i thought it's a great way to and they're probably not two of your favorite guys are they uh because I think you can have favorite feuds that aren't necessarily two of your favorite wrestlers. Because, yeah. like, the first few, like, obviously when you said that, I had a couple running through my head. Yeah. And the one, I don't know about you, Younger, if there's any feuds, like, top feuds is kind of a cool topic to, to talk about. But I was thinking Randy Orton, or sorry, uh, Edge and, and John Cena. Mm-hmm. I thought that feud was awesome. But that's totally off topic, and I just thought that was a good feud. Yeah, as far as, like, them being my favorites, uh I don't know. I, I guess I wouldn't call them my favorites. They might be. They might crack my, my top. Maybe crack my top. You know, twenty. What's that? These two, as, as far as my favorites. Like I don't know. I'd have to think about that. That's oh, another, your favorite wrestler. That's a whole other sure, whole sure. other thing. But either into. way, yeah, no. But good. yeah, no. I thought just the way this feud was developed and the story they told. Like it's how you. It's a good way to to tell a you know a wrestling wrestling story. Really, like it started out with them two. Being both being baby faces and ultimately to, you know, Christian losing the title so quick and becoming frustrated after not being able to beat Randy and then becoming a real like shit bag. You know, like the way he won the title was kind of weird on and, a DQ. Yeah. <laughs> like on a weird stipulation. But I guess he totally he bought into that type of character that he was playing and yeah, yeah. ran with it. It was wicked. And the other thing Random, I don't want to dive too much into this either, but I thought, like, the way the company handled the world title at this point in time was, like, excellent. Like, the the way they carried that title throughout the year, like, it went around to a few different guys, and you had good stuff happening. Like, this feud lasted, I guess, from the beginning of the year, I want to say, like, after WrestleMania season, up until now, SummerSlam. And this was, like, the finishing? Yeah. And then so during that time, you have them building up Mark Henry to kind of 
Go come in, come in there next. And then in the meantime, you also got Daniel Bryan over there with the money in the bank, so he could pop in at any time, right? For sure. So after Randy and Christian, then you got Randy and Mark Henry, and they do a little th- little something for a bit. And then makes sense. At least they were building stuff the right way. I just love the way they handled the title this year, like this. And then after Mark Henry, you go into Big Show and Daniel Bryan and Mark Henry and this whole thing. And then Sheamus was always in the conversation too. Eventually, he comes in there with Daniel Bryan. So I just thought like the way the title was handled was wicked this time. This is probably like one of the things that kept me interested. The fact that they treated both titles equally. Yeah. That's yeah, you good. could definitely tell who's going to be next and stuff from the way they were building matches and yeah, building yeah. people. And it's good, though. What they for were sure. Doing. Oh, you yeah. did it the right for way. every show. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, sure. I feel like that's that's a good way to break down a title throughout a year is, like, switch it around and carry, build up guys, you know, and have good, solid feuds in the meantime. But back to the match. For sure. For sure. Um, I had a couple little things in the match. We had Randy really laying on the punches at one point. I thought that oh, was yeah. awesome. That was laying, wicked. Laying it in, in the corner. The corner. For probably more than ten. I know that's not a something Jim Ross is a big fan of. Um, I haven't never, haven't never. Wow. I I don't know if I really I like. <laughs> I don't know if I really like the the ten punches in the corner either because most people shouldn't be walking around after they've been punched ten times. It's in the very face. old school, I guess. But that's a totally yeah. different topic for maybe a round table crowd, or something. Right? It's for the crowd too, right? Ex- oh, totally. When Build you're there, it's up, different. Right? When you're there, it's different. Um, another little thing that was just at the beginning they but it was the storytelling that made it better in the end they didn't really take the weapons out too early yeah they kind of waited but after the match settled in and we got to near the end then i was happy at the beginning i wasn't sure what they were doing but it totally worked um how about that superplex off the top oh. onto the table yeah not through the table but on onto the table that wasn't set yeah, up and just, it broke it yeah, yeah it broke it, it like dented bit, yeah. it on the inside i thought that was I don't know. Different. Never seen that before. Maybe in ECW somewhere, but I've never seen that spot. Yeah. Well, at first it looked like they were going off the top rope onto the other table because the other table was set up on the ground there. Remember? Because they yeah. threw each other back. Yeah. The but they wouldn't go that far. If you're watching some PWG New Japan, oh fuck yeah, they're going through that shit. But you know, <sighs> the shit's rated a little bit two G and yeah. you know. And even at this time, I would say wrestling, like you said it yourself, Donovan, wasn't where it is now. I yeah. agree with as that too. As far as popularity, yeah. and that's that includes all organizations too. Yeah. By yeah. the way, yeah, yeah, oh, at for the time. sure. There is some. Don't get me wrong. That everyone had their moments and shit, right? But yeah. How about some of the stuff outside the ring? We had uh, RKO through the table, through the announce yeah. table. Yeah. We had Christian spitting in Randy Orton's face. For, yeah, he brought with, the loogie back for a concerto. Kind of disgusting, but I know those two things didn't happen simultaneously. But two yeah. two points of the match to bring up. And then uh, some good shots with the kendo stick. From Christian to Randy and yeah, near the end of the match, um, Christian did go through a table on the outside of the ring as well, right? Yeah, well, towards and, the uh, ramp. Yeah, we can talk about the end here because what like when Randy he turned it up, he really fucking turned it up. Oh yeah, he was getting the blood and he smearing it all over his yeah, face. Yeah, well, he yeah he was great. Like, oh yeah, good. well Randy's great, right? Yeah, the the whole expression. back then I think he cared a little bit extra that he might. I think no, he just, I'm not he, putting it on him, but that I, he just doesn't I, have now. I think he just needs something like that he can sink his teeth into. Is really yeah, but is. I also think he's just, this is a personal opinion. I just think he's more involved in family life and stuff that he didn't get to do when he was maybe. Yeah, I don't, well, I'm, I'm not going to debate on it too much, but like he said, like he said, he like on the, on a podcast that he, like this was something you could get, he could get into. Like these guys are buddies and they work well and he needs something it was to a cool, dive into. It was a cool feud. Like I'm sure if he had someone. To work with that, that was he's familiar with gonna, at least yeah you know, somebody yeah. that he can do s- stuff someone that would like excite him he'd probably we'd probably see some good good stuff but uh yeah the finish yeah uh, he, he was just christian like, with the surprise uh kendo stick out of nowhere kind of near the table or uh well randy s- hit him stairs. with like literally everything but the kitchen sink yeah like he what he pushed him through the table whacked him with the chair a bunch of times he did the spin randy catch spin through, through the, the table, table. Um, yeah, I don't know. Technical difficulties here at the PW look back with some of the equipment right now. Hopefully we can fix that, but I don't know. We'll keep going. We'll keep going forward. Um, I, the, the finish of that match I thought was probably the moment of the night. We'll get to that later as we always have our standout moments of the night, but that RKO was fucking awesome. Oh yeah. Out of nowhere, Christian jumping up on the ropes, turning around, boom, quick. And I, I mean, you see an RKO, that's pretty much it. And you know that, but um yeah yeah wicked finish did you think what did you think going into it like because 
Were you, were you under the impression that Randy was going to take it or that or that Christian was going to take it? Did you have like a, a I don't think that was going to go either way. I thought it was going to be Christian because yeah. I didn't know how long the title reign yeah. he had had. I thought and it was I, going either way, to be honest. Yeah. Just because of like what kind of match it was. And, but yes, I could see if, Christian winning it because he, yeah, he, like he, he was I, a coward it, at the time. So he, he probably would have been like, you know. Yeah. You if you would have asked me, I probably would have thought Christian was going to win. That's cool. Going I, in. Yeah, I just wanted to know. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Oh, well, no, I remembered, like, this yeah. whole show. So you remember oh, what you time, felt yeah. back yeah. then? Sorry? Oh, you back remember? then. Yeah. Um, I I think I might have been... I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't remember what I thought back then. I can't, yeah. couldn't tell you. I enjoyed it, though. I enjoyed the fuck out of this feud. I can tell you that much. So, yeah. Right. On to our main event of the evening. The main event of the evening being... What do we got, boys? Come on. Help me out. Help me out. The best in Mr. the world. Star himself, a.k.a. Mr. Shy town a.k.a. trying to be an MMA wrestler slash fighter, a.k.a. I just stole the championship from you, a.k.a. <laughs> no, I'm not going to touch your hand because I know where that hand's been, a.k.a. your boy CM motherfucking <laughs> punk. The Chicago Brett, made. Brett. Versus... Versus John Cena. Yeah. <laughs> Just John Cena. Just John Cena. Um, I, you know what I have to say right off the bat for this match? Um, Cena seemed like not so hated. The crowd. I oh, mean, no, no, I no, mean he was, he at was. the beginning. No, he was. Well, they loved him, bro. No, but like, they were saying he his, can't wrestle. In his entrance? No, like in, in the match. No, no. Mid-match, yeah. I'll give you that. Mid-match, it got... Oh, but like during the entrance. Like his entrance? Oh, well, this is before the whole... Yeah, yeah no, no, like when he no, but I mean, like the people seemed like they were genuinely happy to see John Cena. Like yeah. it wasn't like oh, ah, yeah, because that chant you. that chant hadn't started yet. At no, the time. not oh, well, definitely not. But I don't know that that shocked John me. John Cena sucks. Before, before we get into the match, exactly, um, the promo video was amazing. I thought. Oh yeah, did you like it? Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a good promo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just building up the feud, and for anybody who didn't see everything before kind of like myself it just really helped you know set the table for what i was about to see cena winning the title and, and having the two belts and them really focusing on the two champions needing to have one champion that was really cool um cm punk's music hitting is great i mean we started our show with it yeah. it's kind of the music i think that every wrestling fan is one day hoping to hear again in wwe who knows if it'll happen probably not but we can all hope yeah um yeah Champion coming out first again. I didn't talk about this in the Christian match, but well, they're both the champion. I guess that's true. But no, I know what you mean. <laughs> no, no, like, but like, even in the Christian match, we didn't talk about yeah. it. the champion coming out first. I don't want to go too deep into that, but that's something they're very flimsy with, though. They're like, starting I... to do that now too, actually. What have the champion come out first? Mm -hmm. More... Well, well I, no, yeah. I feel like they fixed it a lot in the last like year and a bit. But I think it's like it's like hit or miss. Like you never know. It's either. It's going to, I don't know, it's flimsy, I think. I, But I haven't been, maybe you guys are, I haven't, I can't recall like lately what, but. Yeah, lately they have. But anyway. Yeah, they have been doing it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Cena didn't seem to have much hate, I thought, in this match. I thought the the overall. No, he definitely got hated and he just had to wait. He got hated like halfway through the match. Yeah. The Cena sucks. Let's go Cena started. Yeah. Definitely, and it was funny, like you mentioned Younger during the match to hear CM Punk chants and actually have CM Punk be in the ring. <laughs> That's so true. It's weird, It's eh? the first time I've seen that, I think. Probably. Because we're all so used to it because we've been watching it so much lately, right? And that, like... Yeah, and people nowadays just fucking, I don't know, rub it in. The marks. I'd feel, <laughs> I'd feel horrible if I didn't bring up my favorite part about this match, and it's got to be Triple H, like, <laughs> being the best referee possibly in WWE. Like, yeah. he's... You, they always say you're doing a good job as a referee when you don't notice him. I think there was three times in this match where I was like, oh, yeah, Triple H is the ref. Yeah. Because <laughs> he just does a good job. Like, he just acts like any other referee out there. He's not pulling all this crazy shenanigans, you yeah. know, like Shawn Michael, wacky Shawn. Wearing you know. booty shorts. Yeah. Oh, man. Imagine Triple H was in booty shorts calling the match. <laughs> no, I don't no, I, no, I, no, I can't imagine that. Thanks. You sick bastard. <laughs> I'll skip on out on that one. Um, this match yeah, definitely... What the fuck is wrong with you? That was weird. <laughs> well, no, it's not. Hey, whoa. Just for the listeners out there, okay, Shawn Michaels was once a ref. 
and he wore these really, really short yeah, shorts. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. And it was I've, like, seen, I've seen the clips. So, so this is for the reference. So it's not me. I'm not thinking about Triple H and booty shorts, all right? Just to clarify that for everyone. Don just trying to back himself up. and I love Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, but, uh, Nick's I, favorite. I'm, yeah, that's... <laughs> He Roman did a good Reigns, job tonight, AG, okay? I'm, I'm giving him, like, his... his you damn right, yeah. Giving him the old fist tonight. He's doing good. Um, giving him the old fist. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the, the old picture, you know what I mean? Like, I know, I'm just... I'm just you, for... The old Triple H... I'm just trying After to... the NXT guy makes her debut and he throws up the fist. <laughs> you know what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, the the wrestling in this match. How, how was the wrestling? Because I think we didn't get as much pure wrestling with Christian and Randy. It was a little more shenanigans. Yeah. Good shenanigans. Good, good storytelling. Shenanigans. But this match had a lot of chain wrestling back and forth. Loved Cena it. and Punk, obviously. Loved. Yeah. Still really good. Yeah. Uh, I think it was good. Uh, in the beginning, I think it was just for trying to get the fans all hyped up, especially when they started doing the Cena chants. Uh, you can tell, too, you know how they really work around like that. They won't really do too much. There's a lot of, like, takedowns and then, like, holding them by the head like a chokehold or something like that. And yeah. try to break out of that chokehold. After. Punk seemed, like, relentless. Yeah, exactly. Like, he just really was yeah. not yeah. letting Cena get any, you know. Anything in general. Yeah. Anything, yeah. He, he was staying on top of him. But it was also back and forth, too. Cena got his stuff in, his slam moves and stuff like that. Um, how about that drop kick by Cena? I, oh, yeah. I, as I was writing it down, King said it, but I think... That might have been the best drop kick I've ever seen Cena do. It was a good one. It's it kind of an awkward. It was awkward, but Cena doesn't it have. Sick. Yeah, because he's, he's a not, bigger guy. Yeah, you don't picture him doing a, a Randy Orton. Yeah, you know. No, no it's not just that. It's the way that kick. he did the drop kick. It was very awkward. And he like, hit. He didn't. Yeah. And he hit like he. he hit made him pretty good contest. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. Um, I don't know something cool, but different. Yeah. Especially big boy John Cena. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, Punk was throwing a lot of good knees throughout the match. Like his famous one where he run, gets you in the corner and does the run. Oh, the mm-hmm. run and, and then right in the face. comes like up right off the top rope man. with the right knee. Yeah. 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 And Cena against the ropes a couple times and did that. And I loved it. Yeah. Punk is very <laughs> innovative and in using... Just like of, legs. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And just using different types of moves that aren't you don't see all like, night. There was that one submission where he had the leg. That's what I was going to say about the relentless. Like when he yeah. was doing that submission. I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, pulling his arm and then he put his leg around, around his neck in the his... front of his neck and pushed up while pulling on his arm this way. So it was like that. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so it was very different. No, I mean, exactly. Very just different. Cool submissions. Um, you can definitely tell he was going to the UFC from there. Yeah. I'm maybe just joking. Background I thoughts that, but... the whole time. Apparently, not, that's what he not, said. We're, we're not going to pretend gonna... that didn't happen. <laughs> But uh, anyway, how about the Your boy Don the famous staff infection on his arm? I think I noticed that there, the, the yeah. pod the podcast. I don't know. We learned all about that. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> if that he. I remember he did rock that elbow pad for a while. I don't. I don't know if that's what it was. It could have been. Yeah. Um. I don't know. It seemed like it was injured. really taped up. So. Yeah. Heavily bandaged. Yeah. But um, what did you think about the chemistry of these two? Like, I think they work well together. I think they may. Have They've, I don't know how many matches in total on like pay per views and raws and stuff as far as one on one goes, but I definitely like the chemistry between like Cena and Punk. Definitely, they had some good matches over the years. I want to go back. I know we plan to, at one time, look back at the Money in the Bank. I mean, it'll be a little bit weird looking back after watching this for me, but I still want to look back at that Money in the Bank pay per view in the future. If there, not just well, the match, we could do a, like a match look back, maybe a mini. Well, random side note: there's one we got to see too. It's another one with them. It was at a pay per view, and it's uh, I think it was in Cena's hometown, but it's really good. Oh, okay, yeah. I think it might be my favorite of all their matches, honestly. It was a really good one, but it was like later on in the whole thing. I think it might have been during Punk's like, yeah, reign or right before it or yeah. Okay, um, I thought the match wasn't quite as good as the Christian. And uh, um, Randy match. That's just my personal opinion. I don't know if it was... I think it was more the storytelling, the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows that the match had. It seemed more ride the same sort like, of line where Christian and, and Randy kind of took you on a ride. Yeah. Um, it was still a good match, like I said. And I genuinely usually like wrestling matches more than like hardcore type stuff. And yeah. this time I didn't. But I think um, what I liked about... I'm a time guy, like you know. I like I enjoy those fucking Iron yeah. Man matches. There's a lot shit. of near falls in this. Yeah, very modern. I like the time though, like that they had like so much. I don't know how long exactly. Yeah, but I didn't they get went. all. I didn't get all the times for this show, but it was definitely over thirty minutes for um, these guys. Like, yeah, lots of near falls. I I know you guys said that the crowd was kind of not with Cena the whole time, but I I, I don't know. I felt like they turned on him a bit. From that was just me. Like the beginning, it seemed well. I like don't. He know. was not 
getting booed and then i have it written down that like you guys are totally right like crowd turn on cena is is what i had it was kind of a question i wanted to ask you at the guys. time that's when the hate started coming around cena where everyone saw yeah him being in like everything main events like well, I, and I, I, getting opportunities when he shouldn't be getting opportunities and i think that's when Miz started freaking out too if i'm not mistaken at the time i, well, I know like people, a lot not of just it, cena but before this even like people were already kind of that's what led to this whole like pipe bomb stuff like that's a lot of the you know punk brought it up and talked about it it was like cena was people were kind of tired of it but he still definitely obviously as always like has his diehards like as you see in the crowd of another course. like point i wanted to bring up to you guys too was like i think this is you know before bullet club was the thing for the wrestling like you know we see bullet club shirts everywhere there was a ton of punk shirts in this crowd like, oh yes yeah. like a lot yeah that's what i was saying that too. white shirt that you sure, talk yeah. about that you have yeah yeah that was everywhere the guy holding the Joey number sign had one. Yeah, and, there, and that was like a. I remember during this time, just to show how he probably was one of the top merch, but there was, that was a constant thing. Like I noticed that a lot in the crowd. It was like, yeah, cool. Um, all right, so I don't know. Walk me through the finish here. Oh yeah, we had, quite, we had a lot. Quite, yeah, quite the. It was a good finish. Yeah, I don't know. Well, good finish. Good finish to the pay per view at least. Well, yeah, I thought like I remember you said you didn't really like it, but I to me like. The, like at first I, I felt the same way like watching it live but then the way it ended I thought like at least there was a method to the madness like if it just ended with the the foot on the, the rope the foot on the rope right yeah so we had John Cena getting pinned he put his foot on the rope Triple H genuinely didn't see didn't it see we it. think counted one two three punk one I didn't think that was it I thought Cena was coming back in and they were gonna well yeah cause he was kinda saying to yeah. Triple H at first like I have my foot on the rope you yeah. didn't see it well even Dude. before I thought that Stephanie or some some, some other somebody, yeah. authority figure was going to come out and say no 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 yeah. no, but we didn't get that we got we got big total, daddy cool Diesel yeah big daddy D's your boy Sean's backup bow wow wow <laughs> bow, wow yeah wow, very yeah. NWO esque full dyed beard and hair oh yeah before he cut it all off and walking it, walking it, through the crowd did you go. not see him at first through the corner I don't know if you caught that no, shot I'm glad you didn't because no, I like no, the surprise like, not at there. all did I see that um so Kevin Nash comes in and gives him the old uh, jackknife power bomb jack and knife. really dropped him. Yeah, it was good. It was very up high and just land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree. That um, finisher was awesome back in the day. And then we had my favorite. Alberto. Alberto Dario. <coughs> comes out with the Money in the Bank cash in on CM Punk. And this time he gets it. Because he had tried before, but he didn't get him. But this oh, time he got him. He got him this time. and With the help of Diesel. Of yeah, all that's mean, my boy. Hey, I didn't don't see. Make, don't make fun of him. That's my boy. The, the, that's my boy. The, the Raws after this, but I don't know. I definitely want to go back and look. Maybe. You want to know what happens next? I kind of do because oh, it, you should see what happens on Raw. It, him and Punk. it seems a little weird, and I'm not an Alberto fan, so. Well, think about Big this. Diesel and, and CM Punk. Think about have like this. A, well, on the, Ra off, on the Raw, you also get uh, Ray versus Del Rio. This, yeah. this is what I'm talking about. Like what I said on Maybe the SmackDown. Maybe it's not a bad Raw. Same thing on Raw. Like they kept the title in this neat, like nice little place of guys, like where you have the certain guys and they would go at it. Because Ray and Del Rio, as you know, in the six man match, I, I talked about it. They yeah. they've had a constant feud the entire time Del Rio's been in the company. So, so there was more ma ma uh, method, know, to method, method to the madness. Method like I said, to the yeah. madness that then, you know, because the following night we get Ray versus Del Rio. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Overall, like. I didn't like the finish with CM Punk and the way that the foot on the rope went. But when you get a cash in, I mean, I'm sure at the time I would have been way more okay with that. I yeah. think it's more just my Alberto biasness. <laughs> but it was good. The match, like, overall, I don't know. I get, like, I'm not a star, guys. I don't normally give stars, but I would say three stars out of five. Like, it was a good match. It, it was wasn't, a good match. wasn't yeah. quite Christian and Edge storytelling. Or and Christian and Randy. Or, yeah, yeah, sorry. Christian and Randy storytelling. Like, like you said, chemistry. I don't think it was quite the same, but um, I think we should move on to our uh, standout moments of the show. Yeah. Anybody have any any first ones to, to tell me? Yeah, first one for me would be the Mark Henry uh, throwing, um, sorry, what's his name? Seamus through the wall there, through the barrier. Yeah. That was awesome. I wasn't even expecting that. I forgot about that. So, uh, and that the was caution awesome. tape, too. And don't the caution tape caution after. Tape. Don't forget about the caution <laughs> tape, yeah, because I totally forgot about that. <laughs> but yeah, that's cool how they worked around that. But uh, that was one. That was my standout for the night. Yeah. Um, I'll give you mine. Mine has to be the RKO finish for, for Randy and Christian. I was, I didn't even see it coming. Even when Christian jumped up in that corner, I thought he was going to do something. I did not see the RKO coming. Yeah. 
that and then only because we didn't talk about it once on the show tonight and i will feel terrible if we don't bring it up shout out to the pyro bring back the pyro uh, fucking yeah. bring back the pyro is right hashtag Fuck yeah. bring back the pyro hashtag bring back the pyro we'll get that going hashtag pwlb2 yeah for <laughs> sure don oh moment of the night God. Yeah, what do you think? what Don's... the fuck's your name again i forget Don Cena. In... no no he was giving us names it was something different. I have many. I I am the man of a thousand and one names. Uh, Just like Dean Malenko thousand, was yes, the man. Oh, I know the, the I know the reference, yes. sir. <laughs> We're all wrestling fans here. Don Malenko. Um, but yeah, tonight, really. moment of the night there, Don Malenko. I ain't congratulating that sucker, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I <laughs> that might be line of the night. Yeah, for no, sure. A line of the night for sure. I just um, Booker T on commentary was cool. Anything um, maybe in the ring? Um, as much as. I've I've watched the two main events so much, like through I've I've I owned the DVD. Yeah. I've I went back and watched those a ton. I haven't watched the rest of it as much. Um, Daniel Bryan and Wade Barrett. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a dark or dark sleeper. You know whatever you want to call it of the night for sure. I enjoyed that. Um, that match was good. Yeah. Yeah. Good show. I guess. Like I said at the beginning, maybe a little pear shaped. Kind of a better end second half for sure significantly than the first half yeah um but overall a pretty good show i guess to watch i would say if you want to have you know a show that's got two really good championship matches that are totally different from each other i would say go and watch SummerSlam 2011 yeah or if you guys if you don't feel like watching the whole pay-per-view go back and watch those two main events yeah, for sure or, or maybe even from from wade bear and yeah. daniel bryan on let it carry through and, and watch all that and but, then listen to this yeah, that's that kind of the idea. That's the point. Um, yeah. But that's so fi- kind of figure it out, okay? Mike, you're one of them too, all right? So make sure you're listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which I already know you are, we're so get- don't worry about it. We're getting you a show. Yeah. We're gonna get you your own little fucking your own show. Mike's listening. Don't worry about that. He's listening. Twenty minute show, little. You know, we're gonna get him. Maybe maybe you can be on the show too. What are you talking about? Mike's always on the show. Mike's listening. Mike's you been know. on one show. He's, he's listening. He's listening, but. He's only been on. We're gonna get like a this week in indie wrestling or something of that nature. That'd be really cool. We I do like an indie it. promotion. Like, it's on like Don. Yeah, your like, boy Younger over like here you is could, in the building. I'm gonna have to put some of that on you in the sense you're gonna have to come up with your own little notes and be ready for when we make the call to get your insight. Okay. So that's good. I stay, think we should stay tuned for that in the future. Yeah. But I'm happy we're finally back, looking back, and back. Di- looking back. <laughs> Um, we're here at the Pro Wrestling Look Back. Check us out, as always, at PW Look Back on Twitter and Instagram. Pro Wrestling Look Back on YouTube, on Facebook. Yes, I will get the Facebook going if anybody's on there. We know it's not quite up to par with all the other platforms that we've been using. We're going to get that fixed. Yeah, because Facebook sucks. I wouldn't know because I really don't use it, Facebook. Yeah, but people are out there using it, and we're trying to reach as much people as possible. Again, we are in the midst of you know obtaining more cash flow and and maybe getting on some podcast networks looking for something to host uh, on our podcast but again check out the website prowrestlinglookback.wordpress.com uh, my personal twitter if you're interested in any i don't know racing or star wars or more wrestling stuff at salsa s c e l s a check that out there i'm on there mine is always z j v y 93 and like i said before make sure you add me cuz i'm still at 83 followers i lost two the other day um so i was at 85 i'm not doing too well right now um like i said these guys are laughing but this is uh almost like bullying uh oh, i tried giving no. out my twitter and you guys are just a bunch of assholes and these two won't help me so anyways take a look back at me and uh, you look back after dark ladies and gentlemen there you go. Look me up and uh, add me because I feel lonely. Oh, Thanks God. very much. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's amazing. Don, your Twitter? You're yeah. up there, do new you know, school fucking... Do you, do you know what's my Twitter, Younger? What's it? We got Donovan's. Once again, N-E-W, which he spelt right, which is fucked. S-K-O-O-L, like a two-year-old. Money. M-O-N... Oh, sorry. M-O-N-E-Y. Yeah, it's a little known fact, but I actually made that Twitter when I was two. That's impossible because it wasn't around at the time. Yeah. But I don't know what he's trying to say. I was in the DeLorean. Right and yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned for another show. Thanks for checking out the Pro Wrestling Look Back, guys. Man with a uh, thousand and one names, my ass. <laughs> I'm Nick. Hey, we're counting. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, whatever. Keep counting. Oh, man. Jesus. Yeah, we'll see. I'm Nick. Thanks I'm... for joining us, Pro Wrestling Look Back. I'm sitting here with Younger. And Donovan telling you to stay classy. The
over. 